Okay, pretty much the main fat that people are consuming in terms of a dietary fat is industrial seed oils, canola and soybean oil mainly. Like, people are eating tablespoons of this stuff every day. We're just gonna watch how it's made compared to olive oil, which is a fat that I like, and let's just see the difference. So you be the judge for yourself. Canola oil is a commonly used type of cooking oil. It's derived from the seed of the canola plant, which North American farmers have been growing for about 30 years. 30 years. So you gotta, this is new stuff. Procter & Gamble was a big driver behind this to make canola oil popular and other industrial seed oils popular. 30 years is a blip in human history. People have been eating butter, beef tallow, olive oil for thousands and thousands of years, but okay. The plant blooms in the summer, producing bright yellow flowers. Farmers harvest the seeds from pods, which form after those flowers die off. Canola oil is one of the healthiest cooking oils. Compared to olive, sunflower, and soybean oils, it has the lowest level of saturated fat, 7%. Saturated fat is not something that I'm freaked out about or I'm trying to lower. And this is becoming common knowledge, even in like, you know, cardiology, that saturated fat isn't the demon that we thought it once was, if in the context you're a healthy human being. So this demonization of saturated fat we now know is wrong, and it was put forward by the sugar lobby. It also contains more healthy omega-3 fatty acids and is high in monounsaturated fat, which Barely lowers a source cholesterol. Of omega -3. Lowering cholesterol isn't the goal of human health. When the canola seed arrives at the processing factory, it contains foreign material, mostly plant pieces. So the first step is to clean the seed in a vibrating sieve. The seeds, smaller than the openings in the sieve's mesh, fall through to a conveyor below. The foreign material remains on top. A con you can see the, it's hard to extract fat from these seeds. There's not a lot of fat there. So let's see what they do to, to figure it out. Veyer moves it to a storage bin where it's collected for sale as cattle feed. Okay. The seeds pass by a magnet. It removes any metal that may have fallen in during the journey from field to factory. You really think it gets all the heavy metals, this magnet with all these seeds running by? This is disgusting, honestly. Like, if you think your canola oil wouldn't test hot for heavy metals, you're tripping. Next, the seeds enter a roller mill. They pass between two steel rollers, which crush them into thin flakes. A conveyor then feeds the flakes into a screw press. It has a large revolving screw-shaped shaft enclosed within a slotted cage. As the shaft turns, its threads God, squeeze gross. the flakes with high pressure, forcing out the oil, which then drains out through the slots. Right now, and in all honesty, I don't have like any crazy issues with this process so far. It's disgusting, but as of now, in this process now, this is all like mechanical stuff, but you'll get into what actually happens. Let's see. 42% of canola seed is oil. This screw press extracts nearly three quarters of that. The remainder is still trapped in the pressed flakes, now referred to as canola cake. The cake exits the other end of the press and moves canola on cake. to a second extraction. Don't give me that for my birthday. This one- It looks disgusting. It looks like dirt. This chemical extraction process removes mm. all but a trace of oil. Here we go, and now we're gonna start the addition of highly processed volatile chemicals, solvents, chemicals, being added to the fat that you're being told is healthy. This is a heavily processed food. Now we get into the part of the video where it's insanity. The amount of solvents and chemicals that they need to add to make this a fat that sort of looks like olive oil, because you'll see it's not a good looking thing. So let's see what they add to this, and you figure out if you wanna eat this. The factory then grinds the cake into protein-rich meal, which it sells as animal feed. The extracted oil, stored in large tanks, now enters the refining phase. First, they wash the oil for 20 minutes with sodium hydroxide. During this wash this cycle, place. they spin the Looks oil like at high speed mat. so that the centrifugal force separates the natural impurities, which the factory later sells to soap manufacturers. After this cleaning process, the canola oil is visibly clearer. 
However, it still contains natural waxes, which make it look cloudy. So the next step is to cool the oil to 5 degrees Celsius. This thickens those waxes so they can be filtered out. The waxes don't go to waste either. Oh my god, look at this sludge. To produce vegetable shortening. Wait, to produce another toxic fat. In the factory's lab, technicians recreate production on a small scale to ensure performance and quality. Meanwhile, back in the factory, after washing and so I have a bunch of scientists working on this to lighten the color, then use a steam injection heating process okay. to remove Okay, bleach is odor. guys. Bleach is now being added. They try to like skip over that step like, yeah, now we have a team of scientists trying to figure out what to do here because it's this dark disgusting oil. Now we're going to add bleach. So let's bleach this oil. Uh, don't worry, we get it all out. Trust us. The oil is now fully refined and ready for bottling. The canola odor. The equipment for... This is because canola oil and other vegetable oils oxidize extremely quickly. Extremely quickly. Olive oil oxidizes too, but it's commonly sold in these dark amber glass bottles. Canola oil is almost always in a plastic clear vat. And these chemicals that they've added, and they'll get into it, Canola oil would smell rancid if they didn't add these chemicals. You would never consume it ever. You should never, but yeah, let's, let's continue. First turns the plastic bottles upside down and injects filtered pressurized air to blow out any dust or dirt inside. Then it turns the bottles right side up again to position for filling. Just before a nozzle starts filling, it applies a vacuum. If there's no suction indicating a leak in the bottle, the machine automatically ejects that bottle from the line. Plastic packaging again. Each bottling leaking machine in BPA the into your fat. Fills 22,000 bottles per hour. The labeling machines work at the same speed. They spread glue on the back of each label, then apply the label's edge to the bottle. The bottle spins, wrapping the rest of the label around itself. As the bottles come. Okay, we've basically seen now how canola oil is made. The big issue there is the amount of solvents, bleaching, deodorizing chemicals. It's disgusting. And you also have to think, this has only been done on a wide scale for, you know, 30, 40 years. This is a new thing in humanity, and how is it going? How is the health of people that are consuming three to four tablespoons of this omega-6 rich oil? How is it going? It's not going well. Let's look at how olive oil is made. The ancient Greek poet Homer called olive oil liquid gold. And today, a little drizzle. The ancient Greeks used olive oil. This has been used for a long time. The reason they use it, they don't need all this crazy stuff to extract it. You could literally just extract it with uh, one device. You can just press down on olives and get olive oil. But on a large scale, let's see how it's made. ...can still dazzle. Like fine wine, premium olive oil can bring a complexity of flavors to the table and create a real taste sensation. Lovely. The roots Beautiful. of the olive tree stretch far into Italy. the past. For thousands of years, people have harvested its fruit and crushed it with stones to extract the precious oil. In those so it's been done for thousands of years with basic tools. It was used in food. It fueled lamps and was a medicinal ointment. Today's thriving olive groves are living proof that our appetite for olive oil hasn't waned. When green olives turn a violet red, they're ripe and ready for harvest. It's from a fruit. It, it shows you that it's ripe by turning red and now you can make olive oil. The olives fall on nets spread beneath the trees. Pretty simple stuff here. They're just getting the olives from the tree. Again, there's mechanical stuff and solvent and chemical stuff. The mechanical stuff is not that bad. Solvent chemical stuff, you might want to avoid. Pure water. A hose sucks the olives and water into a vibrating bin. This separates out. So here we have olives and water. Keep that in mind. That's all we have going on right here. Olives and water. The cleaned olives now bounce merrily on their way towards the crusher. A few centuries ago, 
the crusher was an apparatus powered by a donkey. Today, though, That's awesome. a motor drives 600 kilogram <laughs> granite wheels to grind the That's oats, really cool. pits and all into a paste. So they're just grinding up olives and water right now. That's all, that's the only ingredients that we have. Once the paste reaches the desired consistency, it's over to a computerized system that regulates the temperature of the paste as an auger mixes it. So now you're adding a little bit of heat and you're Oil mixing it up. Separated from the paste using this machine. Oil starts to drip down. Leaks involve spreading the paste on mats and then stacking them to press out the oil. This system is more high tech. Rows of metal plates dip into. So, traditional people would not be able to to, to make canola oil, at all. That wouldn't happen. They wouldn't be able to because it involves a team of scientists, solvents, bleaches, deodorizing chemicals. Olive oil has been made for thousands of years. They used to use a damn donkey, okay? So, like, you have to keep that in mind. Human beings evolve with stuff. So, canola oil, 30 years old. Olive oil, thousands and thousands of years old. The paste and the oil adheres to them. A spin in a centrifuge separates the residual paste from the oil. The result... There we go. Is we have olive oil. Boom. Right there. Olives and water are the only ingredients right now. Every batch goes to the testing room, where there's a man who has a nose for the job. Some awesome guy just he drinking olive oil all day. He looks aroma. healthy. He's loving it. Like a glass of fine wine. If he did that with those seed oils, he would vomit everywhere because they, they are oxidized and they had to add all those chemicals. Grade with this tester. The entire batch is ready for packaging. Oh, he just spit a bunch of olive oil up. But that's because he wanted to. Ensuring it's all done hygienically. A conveyor funnels these tins into a line for filling. We're pretty much at the packaging stage. A so. system. Here's the deal, guys. Olive oil, coconut oil, beef tallow, butter, ghee. I can show you how all of these are made, and it's very simple. Butter. You milk a cow. You churn it. You get butter. That's, the, that's how it is. Canola oil is an extremely processed food. And for people to say, oh, it's healthy because it lowers your cholesterol, you need to look into what cholesterol actually is. You need to look into books like The Great Cholesterol Myth by Dr. Bowden. For a healthy human being, you should not be in a panic about dietary cholesterol, okay? So I use olive oil, I use ghee, I use beef tallow, I use coconut oil. I do not eat seed oils. I try to stay away from them. They're everywhere. This is the main source of fat for people lately, and it's horrible for you. It raises your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio vastly in the favor of omega-6, when what you want to maintain is about a 1 to 1 ratio, okay? So you just saw how these are made. What do you think is better? What do you think is more natural? Go with that.